got shot, uh, got shot me in the up under the arm, and it blew my uh, nip off. So it was very dangerous. I'm sorry, I mean, it did what? It shot, it went up under my arm, and it blew my fucking areola and nipple, and it messed it all up. I don't drink, I don't smoke. And a lot of people are shocked by that because I used to sell drugs and they was like, you never got high on your own supply? I'm like, fuck no. Cause I saw what high getting on your own supply looked like. Pretty soon it's, you don't have supply. Exactly, you just high and trying to get high. So that's why I was like, nah, that's not for me. You know what, I looked at my family right and everything they did, I didn't like. We used to gamble at my granddaddy house, like, uh, we played spade. Well, my mom didn't play spade, and later on I learned how to shoot craps for my mom. So I saw a lot of gambling games at my granddaddy looker house. Wait, so how did your mom teach you how to shoot craps? Because I watched her shoot crap. Everybody shot craps. I mean, a crap game at our house was like, at my grandfather's house was everybody would be drinking and they shoot craps, and if they lose, it was all, it was guarantees somebody was gonna fight. So that was the great part about a crap game at granddaddy house. Somebody gonna walk away with her ass beaten. What kind of woman was she? Mean as fuck. I mean, just got drunk. She loved to smoke weed. So if she was here now and realized Colorado had weed that was legal, she probably would take her wheelchair and try to drive in that bitch to Colorado. Would she smoke weed around you? Shit, yeah. We had to light the joint. <laughs> we had to go get it started. You, you know, when, you, when we was younger, we either had to light her joint or her cigarette. So she's like, go in the stall and get my shit uh, started. And we would puff it. And I hated that shit because I'm like, I don't think we're old enough to be smoking weed and cigarettes. We ate. <laughs> So, and it was really bad on my sister because she started smoking from that. My sister's been on crack a long damn time. Still on it? Uh, you know, crackheads don't never tell you that they own it. <laughs> <laughs> they always tell you they're in recovery. When they don't have no money, they're in recovery. All right, so I'm pretty ignorant here. When you, you, got, you have a supply of crack that you go to sell, you get your crack from somebody else, yep. right? How's that work? Do you have to pay them for it or do they give it to you and then you give them a cut of your profits? Uh, it, Walk it me through work, how the crack it, business works. It can work. It can work both ways. Like when I first started, I would just take my money and buy it, and then uh, after I sell it all, I buy more, and then you know just keep putting it in till you till you end up end up with a lot. I was baffled by the money. I couldn't believe the money that was in it. It's, it was a lot of money in the '90s in crack, and I mean at the time I was a single parent of two kids at 15, so I couldn't get a job. So that was a great job at the time. I wasn't never trying to do it to be flashy. I was only trying to do it to survive. Was it dangerous? Yes, yeah, it was dangerous. Fuck yeah, it was dangerous. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> well, talk, talk to me about the danger. Uh, what did you face? I got shot. Oh, you I, got I, shot. Yeah, I got shot. A guy shot me in the up under the arm and it blew my uh, nip off. So it was very dangerous. I'm sorry, I mean, it did what? It shot, it went up under my arm and it blew my fucking areola and nipple and it's, messed it all up but <laughs> when I was into drugs people wasn't killing like the black on black violence was wasn't as like it is today you know people would whoop your ass but we didn't pick up guns and shoot each other that was the early 90s so that kind of probably the only reason why I'm still alive <laughs> other than a dude shoot me but it was a lot it was scary to be outdoors all night with your kids just selling drugs Sleeping in the car. Always hustling. Always hustling, always trying to survive. You know, and not only did I have my two kids, my kid's father, um, sister had drug problems, so I kept her girls too. So here I am with 16 with uh, five kids. Five kids at 16. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're just trying to get everybody fed and everybody clothed. And, and out to school. That's all I was trying to do. They're grown. And I was like, I'm so sorry for taking y'all through the bullshit that I took you through. And my cousin said, without you, bitch, I wouldn't be here today. It's true. It probably is true. But, you know, like I got those kids in some trouble. I drug them, in, I drug them into selling drugs and making some wrong decisions in life. So we all kind of learned together. Did they start selling drugs because, because they saw you or did you ask them to? No, I told them to. It, was, it started like, hey, you gotta help me sell this drug because this is how I pay my rent, this is how, this is how I feed y'all, this is how I take care of y'all. So it was like all of us in a group eventually and nobody was 21. Nobody was 18, <laughs> nobody was 18. <laughs> nobody was 18. Did you spend some time in jail? Uh, almost a year. About a year. About a year in jail? For selling drugs, yeah. I did all my time in the county. All jails is the same, this shit was rough. 
it's like a big ass gym and, and then they got these rooms up top back in those days. I haven't been in over 20 years and they had rooms at the bottoms and then all of y'all come down to the little mess, the little bottom floor and you watch TV, you play cards, you do each other hair, you do whatever. And then they tell you when to go sleep and wake up and I was like, I hate this shit. And I also, at that time, my daughter was going to kindergarten and I was locked up and she was with some friends and so I missed her kindergarten, and I was like, I can't ever get that shit back. Who the fuck don't want to drop their kids off at kindergarten? That's the first time they're ever going to real school. Yeah. So that was kind of hard, too. And that was hard on my daughter, too. It made her really um, withdraw from me because she, I used to sell drugs in front of her school, so she hated me. But in her mind, and I'm trying to tell her, I was like, this is my fucking job. Because I'm a kid, so I'm like, well, everybody's parents have a job, so why don't I just tell her, this is my job? And she was like, you killing these people? I'm like, fuck what you talking about, this is my job. <laughs> and she couldn't comprehend, this is my job, because, you know, at the same time, she learned this at school, don't do drugs, drugs is bad, but your mom is one of the known drug dealers in the neighborhood. And what was so fucked up, because every year her classroom would be on the side my trap was on, or the corner. That's what we used to call it, a trap, a trap right there, a trap. So it would always be on the side that I was selling the drugs on, so she could look at her school one day and see me on the corner. When you get a trap, how do you get a trap? You just start, they just, it, if it's nobody's already there, you just start up business, like you move into a, a gas station or you open a convenience store. You just start selling there and the more, the more customers you gain, the more the corner become yours and people, it's like, it's like guys who does that gravita shit. You know, they put their initial on shit, and you know, that's my territory. So there wasn't people trying to take over your trap? I, like I said, when I sold drugs, it wasn't that bad. It became, it got really bad towards the end. But no, because I, I was very popular, so people knew who I was. I bet you were a fun person to buy drugs from. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to treat people like real customers. I didn't. I, I didn't treat you like you was a crackhead or you was a hoe. You sold pussy. That's your. That's your job. I want you to sell pussy so you can buy more drugs from me. Do you remember the last bag of crack you sold? Not sold, but I remember the last bag of crack I had. I met my husband, and um, he had never been in trouble. He had just got out of the military, and he was like, "You're gonna have to stop this. I just got a good job, and I, I can't have this stuff around me." So I was like, well, this man is trying to help me. So I just called up my, one of my nieces and I was like, y'all can have it. And you just got I rid quit. of it and that was the last time. That was the last time. Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yeah? That damn Chick-fil-A fucked me up every time. <laughs> I cannot ride by Chick-fil-A and not stop. I think Chick-fil-A got crack in it. <laughs> they sprinkle a little crack I in the Chick-fil-A. I don't know what's in Chick-fil-A, but I, and you know what? <laughs> I was hoping when the daddy died, I was like, yes, they're finally gonna open on Sunday. But they don't open on Sunday. I'm like, do you know how much money you missing? Who don't like to eat at the church? Come on, Christian establishment. Church people love to eat at the church. Church people eat after church. Yeah. And they, they want chicken. They want chicken. So I love Chick-fil-A. That's my guilty pleasure. Yeah, what do you get when you go? Uh, always the sandwich and the same shit, number one. <laughs> and it's a boring sandwich. It's just got a couple pickles. I don't I I think that I think every Chick-fil-A prepare their chicken with love. Do you have Chick-fil-A in Indianapolis? I wouldn't live in Indianapolis if it didn't have a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> <laughs> when I look for an apartment, I said, we gotta have a Chick-fil-A near us. And that's how I chose my community. Chick-fil-A, make me your spokesperson. Uh, I'm gonna work on losing weight, but I'm gonna still enjoy your sandwich. Oh my God, this shit is so good. <laughs> Look, it's so good that I made my son go work at Chick-fil-A so I can get their family discount. And he was like, I won't quit. I said, you're not gonna quit that fucking job. You're gonna fuck up my discount and I will hurt you. I'll hurt you with some of my discount. <laughs> so is he still there? Yeah, he's been two years. <laughs> Does he hate it? No, he loved Chick-fil-A, but he just tried to quit recently. I was like, you're not quitting Chick-fil-A. You're not legally able to quit Chick-fil-A till you 18. And then I have to beg him, son, please stay, be management. Let's buy us a Chick-fil-A. So <laughs> I love Chick-fil-A. Does he bring it home at night? Oh, no, they don't play that shit. That chicken costs too much. No, but I do, I get the discount. So I usually go there for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Pat, you can't go to Chick-fil-A three times a day. <laughs> I know, that's why I'm so fat now, but... <laughs> I go quite a few times. How many kids do you have? I have four kids. I have a 30, 29, 18, and 16. 30, 29, 18, and 16. Yeah, I call them my Medicaid kids and my Blue Cross Blue Shear kids. 
<laughs> <laughs> so the ones that are 18 yeah. and 16, are they still living with you? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, my daughter graduates next year. My son is becoming a junior. Okay, and, and what's your daughter going to do after that? I don't know, but I don't want to get the fuck out of my house. Because I was like, look, you grown and I'm grown, and we cannot live in the same house with two vaginas. They just don't click. They don't click. That shit, I'm telling you, you don't know vaginas fight like hell. I don't know how women live together. My daughter's gay. I was like, how do you and that pussy don't fight? <laughs> 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 my my girls, they can't live with me. And you know, girl, girls, young ladies don't like mothers anyway. So we click all the time. When did your daughter come out to you? Came out to say she was gay? Yeah. Uh, well, let me tell you something. When your child is gay, you know it real early. You can be denying it all you want to. But I knew my child was gay around elementary school. My mother-in-law was like super Christian and we was over at her house one time and she told my husband, she said, you need to tell Pat that this kid got a gay spirit. So I told him, I said, yeah, I don't know how she know it. I said, you need to tell your mama fuck her and she need to wet her wig cause it's dry. My daughter said she's born gay. I told her she wasn't gay on the orchard sound. I don't know. <laughs> the orchard sound didn't show a gay baby. It said a fat little girl, so. But she went off to college and we kind of fell out and we, you know, she never said she was gay. So I said, if you just tell me out your mouth you gay, I'm okay with it. She said, I'm gay. I said, well, well shit, come on home. I've been knowing you was gay. I just needed you to say it out loud. And I got over it. You know, I asked her to forgive me and we moved on. We, we okay now. Yeah, you guys are cool now. Yeah, I like my daughter-in-law. Uh, she looked like Lil Wayne. But <laughs> <laughs> she liked them thug bitches. <laughs> she like with the Timberland boots that look like the little boys be sagging. And you have one son? I have two sons. Two sons. Yeah, I have a 29 year old. He has a baby and he, li he lives with his girlfriend. So your grandma, Miss Pat. I am grandma. But the baby don't, I told that baby don't call me no fucking grandma. That is not my name. My name is my daddy's mama. My daddy's mama. <laughs> That's what she called me. So when she calls you up there, she say, hey, I'd like, uh, is this my daddy's mama? No, she be like, my daddy's mama. I said, come on, baby. Come on. You call me no goddamn grandma. Why, why don't you want to be called grandma? I'm not no grandma. I told my kids, I said, look, I had y'all really young, and I don't want to be a ghetto grandmama. So don't have no fucking kids, okay? Let's break this stereotypical shit. Don't have no kids. So when my son, my grandma was three years old, I was 41 when he had his first baby. I said, oh, that's still a little ghetto, but I think it don't look so bad, because he's at least he's 20, at least he's in his 20s, late sure. 20s. But that, I was like, I don't want to be no grandmama. But it's the most wonderful thing in the world. She loves to ask a lot of questions. And I like, I like talking to her, but sometimes she likes to talk too much. And I was like, look here, baby. Grandma tired. She trying to watch her pre-recorded show. Can you say this shit for your teacher tomorrow? <laughs> Can you say any questions? <laughs> I think it was a third or fourth grade teacher. Her name was Miss Troop. She died a couple of years ago. And this lady was just, uh, she was phenomenal. Like, she, I came to school and I was like really poor and my mama was an alcoholic, and this lady took out the time to, you know, wash, wash clothes and bring me clean clothes so the other kids wouldn't pick at me. She took time to comb my hair, brush my teeth. She really cared. That's beautiful. So she's the first person that ever told me that I can be anything in the world I want to be. She said, "Don't." She said, all you need is a dream, and if you dream it, it, it'll come true, just dream. And I wanted to tell her so bad how much she meant to me, but when I found her, she died. She oh, died like when the, within that week, when wow. I finally found her, but it's, it's Miss Troop. She was a, uh, I think she was my third or fourth grade teacher at English Avenue. I remember her telling me, she said, Patricia, if you just get to school early, I comb your hair and I change your clothes. And I think that's why I got teeth today, because she brushed my teeth. That and, is so beautiful. And she kept everything at school. And, cause she knew I was getting picked on, cause I was, I was a poor kid, even when I started doing comedy. And when I wanted to quit and shit wasn't going right, I was like, mm-mm, Miss Troop said I can do this. Miss Troop said I can do this. You know, she's my hero. And that's the only time I ever get goosebumps when I talk about Miss Troop. Oh.